Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to be talking about some interesting research that's been recently presented on CLL. I'm going to talk right now about a paper presented at IWCLL, the International Workshop on CLL 2023, on the life expectancy for those with CLL treated with targeted therapies and the fact that it's nearly the same for age and gender match controls. The bottom line on this was this study looked at the five-year overall survival, OS, in treatment-naive CLL patients who were unfit or greater than 65 years old with chronic lymphocytic leukemia compared to an age and gender matched population without CLL. It found that patients who had targeted therapies had almost but not completely the same survival as those without CLL. This research was presented by Stefano Malika, MD, at IWCLL, the International Workshop on CLL, that took place October 6th through 9th in Boston, Massachusetts. In the way of background, we all know that targeted therapies have revolutionized the treatment of CLL, but we also know that they're not curative. Prior studies have shown when ibrutinib was used in frontline, overall survival was the same for those who took ibrutinib as those who didn't even have CLL. This study looks at all the commonly available targeted therapies to see if they improve survival to that similar as would be expected for those without CLL. The method was a meta-analysis of pooled data that compared the five-year overall survival of treatment-naive elderly over 65 or unfit CLL patients in phase three trials of targeted agents. The trials were Resonant 2, Illuminate, Alliance, Elevate Dash TN, CLL14, and GLOW, all of which you can find on the CLL Society website. And it was these were compared to the five-year overall survival of Italian and American age and gender match general population. What were the results? The CLL trial analysis group included 2,223 patients. 1,293 uh, were enrolled in a targeted agents experimental arm. 930 in had chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy. Among tra patients treated with the targeted agents, 75% received continuous therapy with a first-generation Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor, ibrutinib monotherapy in 32.7%, ibrutinib and obinutuzumab in 11%, ibrutinib and rituximab in 18%, 18.4% received a second-generation BTK inhibitor like a calibrutinib, and 18.4% received a calibrutinib in combination with obinutuzumab. 322 patients, or about 25%, received fixed duration therapy with a venetoclax based combination. That was either venetoclax obinutuzumab or venetoclax and ibrutinib. Patients enrolled in the chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy received chlorambisol as a single agent, 14.3%, BR, bendamustin and rituxan, 19.6%, or chlorambisol with obinutuzumab, which is the far majority for those receiving chemoimmunotherapy, or two-thirds of the patients. The median age of the patients treated with targeted agents was 70 years old, but there was a wide range from 47 up to 93. The overall survival of the age and gender matched group was 56 months. What do you think it was for the CLL arm that was treated with targeted agents? it was 53.6 to 55 months. Almost identical, not quite, but almost identical. Not surprising, those who received chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy did not do nearly as well. So in conclusion, these results show that these new targeted agents have almost completely, but not fully eliminated the shorter overall survival of CLL patients compared to their aged 
and gender match cohort. This benefit is not true for those treated with chemotherapy and chemoimmunotherapy and is another reason why patients should re restrict their treatment options to the novel targeted agents that have revolutionized the care in CLL. Thanks for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.